In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, in, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary, and Louisa, in, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, Reign on earth. Fiat. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Our Lady, Queen of all saints. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Vine 20, 11, 19, 26. How I, Jesus, would want everyone to feel my tremendous agony, the continuous rattle of death, the lethargy in which they put the, my divine will. Because they do not, they, because they want to do their own human will and not my, my holy divine will. They do not want to let the divine will reign. They do not want to know the divine will. And this is why it wants to burst its banks with these writings of Louisa, so that if they do not want to know it and receive it by way of love, they may know it by the way of justice. So this is, this is a divine decree. The divine will is going to reign. It's going to come. And Jesus says you can have it by divine mercy, uh, by the way of love, or you will receive it by divine justice. The divine will is coming the kingdom is going to be established. The devil is going to be thrown out. Uh, heaven is coming to earth. This is, we have to understand this. So tired of an agony of centuries, my divine will wants to get out. And therefore, it prepares two ways. The triumphant way, that are its knowledges, its prodigies, and all the goods that the kingdom of the supreme will shall bring, and the way of justice for those who do not want to know it as triumphant. It is up to the creatures to choose the way in which they want to receive it. So as Father Bucci says, um, once Louisa is known, the whole world is going to rejoice. And this, 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 as you begin to read this, as you begin to study this book of heaven, again, your life can never be the same. You, you enter into this abundant joy. You enter into this abundant blessings. You enter in, into this divine happiness. Uh, and you begin to live a life. Your, your family will think you're nuts. You know, because your response is going to be when they say, what about this? What about that? Yeah, look what's happening here. Look, it's fiat. And they're going to say, what is wrong with you? Don't you know what's happening? It's always fiat. And this is what this is what our God is doing. He's bringing out such beautiful things. And, and he's asking us to get ready. Do we want to receive this by way of love, or do we want to receive this by the way of divine justice? It's up to us. It's coming. So, I mean, this is why he needs us to pray for our family, our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers, our parishioners. He needs us to get them ready. So, when you begin to live this, 
you walk into a mall and the divine will is in the midst of creatures. You walk into your parish. The divine will is there because of you in the midst of your parishioners. You walk with, into your family. You know, your, your, your get-togethers. The divine will is there in the midst of your family. Friends, neighbors, co-workers. So Jesus is expecting an awful lot from us. He, he's, he's really, as Father Bucci says, you, you have a duty and obligation. Uh, and uh, as you begin to live this, nothing will bother you. Nothing. Nothing will bother you. Uh, you you're, 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 uh, the times that you would be upset, you're just going to smile. They, because as you give your fiat to all things, God really begins to, to reign in you in a way that is going to astonish you. 5, 20, 11, 23, 26. My daughter, the living in my divine will forms the true sun between heaven and earth. And see these... This is um, heavenly language that we begin to understand. Well, what is this true sun between heaven and earth? He says, its rays extending down below infest each thought, each gaze, each word, each work, each step. So God's divine light is, 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 is happening. And binding them with its divine light, it forms with them a crown around itself keeping it firm within itself so that nothing may escape it. See, everything becomes of God. Its rays extending up high invest the whole of heaven, all the blessed, all the saints, and binding them all with this light, with its light, it lets nothing escape it so that triumphant this sun may say, say I enclose everything. I lack nothing of the works of my God and what belongs to him. And with my wings of light, I extend over everything. I embrace everyone. I triumph over all, even over my eternal maker. Because in the light of his volition, there is nothing he wants that I do not bring to him. Okay, so everything that God wants, we bring to him. There is no act that I do not do for him. There is no love that I do not give him. And with my wings of light, that my eternal fiat administers to me, I am the true king who, investing all, dominates everything. See, we, Adam was, he was lord of the earth. Okay? Whatever Adam said, the creation obeyed. And that's why when Jesus says, you're going to get this back, you're going to get this royalty back, because when you say to that mountain, move, it must move. When you say to that sycamore, be uprooted and cast into the sea, it must obey you. And see, that's, that's one of the things uh, we talked about last summer, about the command of the divine will. How to command. And it's not me going, you're going to do this. I mean, that's not the command. The command is, is what the Protestants say. The Protestants say, in the name of Jesus. Jesus. And it's not the name, it's not magical, but you take the place of Jesus. You, you, what happens at that point is in the divine will, it is Jesus speaking in our speaking. It is Jesus gazing in our gazing. It is Jesus hearing in our hearing. And, and as you begin to learn this command, uh, and, and, and I remember back in, I think it was, uh, 96, maybe 95, this woman in Texas, I, I mentioned it before, she would say, you know, uh, her, the, the wasps were filling her sunroom and, and she'd be swatting all summer long, these wasps. And we were talking about the command then and she says, well, I'm going to try it. So she said to the wasps, the first wasps, you got to get out, can't stay here. She said she never swatted another wasp. And see, you're going to learn how to command. You know, the animals come and attack us. Why? Because we're not living in God's will. As we begin to live in God's will, everything will obey. When, it's, when a rain cloud comes and it's, it's, it's a horrific storm that's coming, you can stand in the breach and say, stop in the divine will. And it does. I remember one time the whole, my whole house was shaking and it was shaking. And this storm was coming, and I said to the Lord, there's going to be nothing left. And I got out on the porch, and I said, 
you know, in the divine will, stop. And just like that, it was like a light switch. Everything stopped, then I went, this is amazing. <laughs> this is really amazing. I mean, it, was, it wasn't me going, you know, like this, you know. It's just, I just said, you know, in the divine will, stop. And it, there was a command that nature obeyed. Now, I'm not saying I'm, I'm nothing, but what I've seen with individuals in the divine will is when you pray for something in the divine will with the command of the, divi- of the divine will, watch what happens. I, we, when we were in, in uh, Corrado, it was this, uh, they lost, somebody lost their iPads and their knapsack, and they came up to me and they went, what are we going to do? What if, I had everything on it. What are we going to do? This one lady said, all, all my cases were on this, and I've lost it. What, I, I, I'm destroyed. It's, so I talking to uh, an individual, and I said, you know, they're here because they love Jesus, Mary, and Louisa. And I know that Jesus, Mary, and Louisa love them, but let's ask Jesus, Mary, and Louisa to give them back their iPads and their knapsacks uh, and, uh, so that uh, Jesus could show to them that they love them as, uh, much, much more. And she says, okay. She, well, I have them this afternoon. And I looked at her and I went, what, what, what do you mean they'll have them this afternoon? And that afternoon... Because of the command, they received their everything back. And they came up and they go, look, we got our iPads. And I'm going, the Lord wants us to know that how we have been praying for centuries is, please, 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 and Jesus is saying, you know, now I'm going to show you how to command. And you just say, Lord, in the divine will. And then it happens. Now, this is something that is astonishing. It's not magic. It's, it's to understand what Jesus is telling Louisa. Uh, he's, he's showing Louisa that there is a new way. And again, it's, it's not begging. Please, 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 please. But just saying, in in the name of Jesus, in the divine will, let it be done. And and like Jesus says, you say to that mountain, move and it must move. Is, is Jesus teasing us? Jesus says, ask for anything and I will give it to you. Even if it's a dishwasher. I mean, ask for anything. I remember this one couple, they didn't have a dishwasher and somebody gave me a dishwasher and they came over and I went, you want a dishwasher? And they went, we're praying for a dishwasher. I said, well, there it is. And, I, and, a, and, and there's no reason for me to take a dishwasher, but it was such a nice looking dishwasher. But God had it all planned. You know, it's the, you, as you begin to live in the divine will, everything, everything starts to work. Everything starts to work. And, and uh, this is why we can receive it in a triumphant way. Or we can see it by a way of divine justice. It's going to happen. And Jesus is at, all he's asking is, would you just give your fiat? And that, that's what's so beautiful. 5, 20, 11, 23, 26, daughter. My daughter, Louisa. The living of my divine will forms the true son. Did I just read that? Yeah. All the way down to the bottom. All right, all the way down to the bottom. I'm telling you. 13? Okay. Sorry. Whoever can resist the solar rays or feel oneself from them when outside, when one is outside, the power of the light is irresistible. And wherever it extends, no one can escape its touch. That lapping against them gently impresses upon them its kisses of light and of heat and triumphant keeps them invested under the impression of its light. There might be some who, ungrateful, do not pay attention to the sun or say a thank you. But the light does not mind even this. Rather, it minds its office of light and remains firm in giving the good it, possess- it possesses. It's the same thing. As we begin to understand this gift, the things will begin to happen. I, I remember even before, well, see, I, I learned about the fine will before I became a deacon. And uh, I remember numerous times in the hospital, in the emergency room, uh, there was this one girl who... Uh, um, uh, she was a Catholic, but she didn't go to church. She was uh, she worked working and bringing in uh, the people from uh, uh, emergencies, you know. And they they'd always be working on somebody, and they would say, "No pulse, no pulse." 
and he'd reach in and just bless the body, you know. And they'd go, we got a pulse, you know. And she'd look at me, and I'd say, go back to church. You know, and the, this happened time after time after time. And I'm, I'm nobody, I'm nothing. But I know the power of the sacrament. And uh, the last time I was there, you know, this guy was this guy was gone. And I'm, I'm standing there like this, and I'm looking at her across the room, and I'm saying, you know, Uh, basically, you got to get back to church. Our, our God, our God has, really wants us to understand how much He loves us, and He has chosen us to be alive at this time to give us the gift of gifts, the prod, prodigy of prodigies, and that's Louisa in the, in the divine will. Our job is so important to Jesus. It's so important that. He is depending on us to call the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. He's depending on us to allow him to reign as Lord. He just doesn't want to be uh, a God that's you know, put away you know, in a tabernacle, you know, hidden in a church. He, he wants us to allow him to reign in us, to walk in our walking, gaze in our gazing, listen in our listening. Dance in our dancing, swim in our swimming. He wants to be Lord of everything that we think, say, and do. Because he knows who he is. He is the God Almighty, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of Sabaoth, that this triune God wants to reign in a soul. So he's, he's really asking us to accept this gift by our fiat. And he's got great, great plans. And uh, all he's looking for is, is a soul to say yes, a soul to say yes. Yeah. So he says in Vine 20, 1, 13, 27, Look, my daughter, from the moment my divine will went out into the field of in creation, it has always been firm. It has always been unshakable in doing good. And in spite of the many volatilities of the creature and of the offenses, triumphing of everything, it has followed its course of always, always doing good. See, in order to make the creature ascend again into the firmness of, into the perennial good of God, into the unshakable, unshakability of my divine will, I, God, want to establish my kingdom in their midst. See then, in what point I have placed you, Louisa, in all the firmness and unshakability of the fiat, so as to allow you to lay this kingdom of mine within it. And just as my divine will triumphs of everything with its firmness, so shall you, Louisa. You will triumph, be the triumph of everything with its full firmness and in the unshakability of its acts. And you, Louisa, shall reorder the divine order between the two wills. The divine will shall be reintegrated in its glory, and the human will shall place itself again in the order established by God. This, this means that we live heaven on earth. This means that there is no more sickness, no more sadness, no more sorrow, no more sin, no more death. See, our Lord has is, is got everything planned. And all that he's asking of us is to cooperate of what he has originally uh, planned, and that is that the kingdom be established on earth as it is in heaven. And so he's giving us the means to obtain this. When we read, when we study, when we give our fiat, God works. Look at look at Father Bucci. Here here is a man who, you know, Louisa held, Louisa blessed, Louisa prophesied over. I mean, here is a man who, uh, the, the last priest on earth who knew Louisa Picaretta personally. This, this is, I mean, this is such an honor that we had today to hear him uh, and, and to record him. Uh, it's, it's such an honor because uh, great things are coming. Uh, one of the things that we'll have later on is the blessing that Louisa gave to him, he wants to give to us. So you're going to get a blessing uh, from Louisa. 
given to Father Bucci and now given to us. This is this is uh, this is amazing. I mean, I, I never would have thought of something like this. Yet, the, when the last time we were with him, he said, "This is this is what I want to give to you: the blessing that he received from Louisa." This is just astonishing. So we can, we continue to read. Volume 22, 9, 27. My daughter, the sun always gives light, nor does it ever tire of following its course of investing the surface of the earth, and its triumph is when it finds the seed in order to make it germinate and to develop it in, its, in order to multiply it, the flower to give it color and fragrance, the fruit to give it sweetness and taste. By communicating its effect, the sun shows with facts that it is the true king of the earth. Therefore, it triumphs when it finds the one, and that's Louisa, to whom it can communicate all its effects, exercising its royal office over the whole of nature. See, this is... What, what kind of life did Adam have before the fall? How did, God, how did Adam walk and talk with God in the cool of the evening? How did, how did Adam speak to the animals? And speak to nature. You know, all of this is going to come back. You know, the, the saints were not given this opportunity. Uh, the saints, you get a little bit of, of St. Francis, brother, son, sister, moon. You get a little bit of that uh, with the saints uh, doing miraculous things. But in the divine will, it's, it's much, much more than that. And, and God is asking us to participate in this. It's, it, these are not pious thoughts. It is actualities that occur. Uh, you can be in Bethlehem holding the baby Jesus. You can be at Golgotha, you know, at the foot of the cross, you know, watching Jesus give his last drop of blood for our redemption. You can be at the Sea of Galilee with, with uh, Jesus and the apostles. See, our intellect, memory, and will have to be surrendered. Our intellect, we have to begin to understand things from Christ's perspective, not from a human perspective. Our, our memory has to be of Jesus, not of what people said about us or our family, but to do this in memory of me. This is to remember. That's why we love Louisa. When you read Louisa, it's always Jesus in her. It's always Mary in her. It's it's to enter into this life of Jesus. And then you can give up your human will. You can choose, use your free will to choose, I never want to live in my human misery again. I want to live in God's holy divine will always, continuously. And this is why it's, um, it's completely astonishing. Okay, I think we're out. Are we at the top of page 14? Okay. On the other hand, in certain lands where it finds neither seeds nor flowers nor plants nor fruits, it can not communicate its effects. It, it keeps them all within itself and therefore it feels without triumph. It is like a king without subjects who cannot exercise his office and so as though indignant because it cannot communicate its effects and it burns... Uh, it burns that land so much as to render it sterile and incapable of producing a single blade of grass. Now, my daughter, Louisa, the sun is a symbol of my divine will, and by its own nature, my divine will wants to follow its course of light in the soul in whom the divine will reigns. And since this light possesses innumerable facts, it never tires, nor does it exhaust itself. Therefore, it wants to communicate its effects and its triumphs and... and its triumph is when it finds the dispositions in you, Louisa. So, God is triumphant when he finds in us the dispositions of Louisa. See, she's the one that possesses this gift. And he says very clearly, it is triumphant when it finds the dispositions in you, Louisa. So, if, God, if we want the divine will to be triumphant in us, then we have to have the dispositions of Louisa. So we have to love Jesus as she loved Jesus. We have to talk to Jesus as she talked to Jesus. We have to, uh, Jesus. when Jesus looks at us, 
he has to basically see the DNA of Louisa in us. And then he can say, oh, there's my daughter. I can give this to you. See, our job, you know, the Franciscans follow Francis. They follow Francis' rules. They, they dress like Francis. They look like Francis. The Dominicans, the uh, Benedictines, they all do the same thing. They follow their founder or foundress. In the divine will, this gift is Louisa's. So how do we look like Louisa? How do we sound like Louisa? By reading and studying and put this into practice. So, like I, I say to people, what do you know that you love? That Louisa said in volume 7. What do you know and love? What Louisa said in volume 28. What do you know and love? Which, what Louisa said in volume 33. See, this has to become our life. And if we want to receive what Jesus gave to Louisa, then we have to really study this. Uh, and, and again, uh, once Louisa was born, as soon as Louisa was born, in 18, 1865, shortly after that, the first baseball, basketball, soccer, ball, hockey, puck, tennis, ball, golf, ball, all the sports came into power after that. And the reason is because the devil knew that if you have sports, uh, people would give their lives for that. They would have no time to read. They would have no time to study. They would have no time to pray. And that, that's where the children are on Sunday. They're at golf, basketball, soccer, hockey, golf, tennis. I mean, they're, they're, they're honoring their God. I remember a couple uh, ladies said to me, uh, our, our life is, is soccer. Our life is soccer. How sad is that? You know, how sad is that? Our life should be Jesus. And that's why if, you, know, you have to walk away from a lot of these things. Our Lady of La Salette said there will be the black tabernacle in everybody's house that everybody will worship. Well, that's the television. People that are addicted to television. You know, I've got to watch my show. I've got to watch my program. I've got to watch my sports. I've got to... And it's wasted time. I think that's, that's the thing that's good. If it's the time of illumination of conscience, that's going to be the most horrible thing. To see all the wasted time where we, we could have been drawn closer to Jesus. We wasted it. Uh... The children, you know, doing the games three years ago, they said they, they played six million hours of wasted time on those games. Six million hours. Totally gone. So now our job is to repair and redo. And, and our, our Lord is asking us to do this through this great gift of, of the divine will. Jesus says very clearly, is, are we at now, my daughter? Okay, now my daughter, the sun is the symbol of my divine will and by its own nature my divine will wants to follow its course of light in the soul in whom it reigns. And since its light possesses innumerable effects it never tires nor does it exhaust itself, therefore we try, it, excuse me, it wants to communicate its effect and its triumph when it finds the dispositions of in you, Louisa, and now in us. More than, more than to a seed, more than to a flower, more than to a fruit, it can communicate its effects, the fragrance, the color, its sweetness, that converting it into knowledges belonging to the divine will forms the enchantment of its garden. And my divine fiat, more than sun, feels like a king who is able to exercise his royal office. It feels it cannot, excuse me, it feels it has not only its subjects, but also its daughter, to whom, as it communicates its effects, its manifestations, so it, ca it communicates the likeness of queen. And, and this is the thing, again, that, that our God wants us to embrace. He says very clearly. And this is all its triumph. Tra transform the soul into queen, into king, into royalty. To clothe the soil with soul with royal garments. Adam was naked because he lost the divine covering. He lost his royal garments. He lost the divine divine will. 
And since all of my manifestations about the supreme fiat shall form the new garden of the children of my kingdom, it wants to always place its effects in you, Louisa, with its light, so as to make it rich and luxuriant, luxuriant with all species of celestial flowers, fruits, plants, in such a way that, attracted by the variety of so many beauties, everyone, everyone, shall feel as though enraptured and shall strive to thing, live in my kingdom. Do you see why Father Bucci said, when Louisa is brought to the altar, the whole world is going to rejoice. Everyone is going to feel as though enraptured. By, by what? By recognizing what Louisa is, what Louisa has done. How? By the grace of God. She has been chosen, as, as Father Bucci said, she is a unique soul. Uh, she is a soul that, as Padre Pio said, the world and the church will focus on in the third millennium. St. Padre Pio said, Louisa is a second son that's going to give light and life to everyone and to everything. And just think, as the sun sets in the west, a new sun comes up. With Louisa, there is no more darkness. She is a human. Jesus and Mary came to earth to redeem mankind because mankind fell from so far. Now, after 2,000 years, because of the Holy Church, uh, we have now Louisa. Uh, it's a new beginning for mankind. This is not a new revelation. This is not a new revelation. This is the oldest thing that God gave to the world, the divine will. Adam lost it. Jesus came and redeemed mankind. Our Lady co-redeemed with Christ. And now there is a newborn. Jesus calls her the mother of the second generation of the children of light. Who is this Louisa Picaretta? Who is she that, that our God is going to show all the world? And not only that, in Vine 24, Jesus says, the Jews will be converted and then the Buddhists, the Hindus, the Muslims, the Protestants, everyone will become Catholic. There will be one church, one flock, one shepherd. Like I said last night, the, the Muslims will say, Mohammed, who? I want to be a Catholic. I want to be baptized. I want Jesus. I want to receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. Do you see what's coming? Everyone is going to be living this universal life that God gave to Adam. And, it's, and the one who is going to help us receive this again is Louisa. And when this happens, everyone shall feel as though enraptured and everyone will strive to live in the kingdom because of this newborn, this firstborn of the divine will, Louisa Picaretta. See, Adam was a human. Adam was not the son of God. Adam was not the mother of God. But it took the son of God and the mother of God, the new Adam, the new Eve, to redeem mankind. Now God says it has to be given back to man. And he's found the firstborn, Louisa. And he says in volume 15, that you, Louisa, I give you this gift. I give you, my daughter, this gift so that you will give it back to the man. The man, basically, with the keys to the kingdom, the Pope. He will be the first one to receive this gift, and then he will proclaim it to all the world. Do you see, do you see where we are? This is completely astonishing what our God has got ready. It's, it's a whole new beginning for everyone and for everything. And even though the devil has seduced most of the children and turned most of the people away from Jesus, against Jesus, uh, he is going to lose. God wins. Uh, again, this is glorious. Vine 21, 3, 31, 20, 27. My daughter, the soul, and this is Louisa, the Louisa who lives in my divine will is the triumph of the divine will. As Louisa, the soul, does her acts in the divine will, it puts out its bilocating virtue that, hovering throughout the whole of creation, extends its divine life in the soul, in the divine will. So bilocation is part of what it means to live in the divine will. And that's the thing that's going to really amaze you. Uh, as you begin to pray in the divine will, Bivocation is part of the gift. 
And that's, again, another good reason to have a priest as your spiritual director. You know, to help you. Uh, I remember when I was in, in the seminary, uh, when I would pray, I'd get in deep prayer, and I'd get to this why in the road. And one was eternal death, and the other one was physical death. And I did not know which one to travel. And I prayed over this. And I, for three months, it was horrible. Every day, I got to this point in the road, and I didn't know what to do. And so finally, I went to my spiritual director, and I said, what do I do? And he looked at me, and he says, don't pray like that. And I went, oh, that's, that's easy. You know? <laughs> I never would have thought of that. And, and, and the, the spiritual director will help you. There, there are certain things, there are certain traps that the devil produces. There are certain situations that the, the devil wants to lead you astray. Um, and when you listen to your spiritual director, and it should be a priest, he will be able to help you in, in spiritual difficulties. You know, uh, the devil is a liar, deceiver, he is a destroyer. And uh, he will try anything and everything to pull you away from Jesus. And unfortunately, uh, what we've seen is good people don't hang around bad people. But good people are a lot of times pulled down by other good people. And uh, that's when you need you need spiritual direction. Because you can say, I'm in this situation, this is what's happening, and that's what's happening, what do you think? And the, the priest you know, will be able to see very clearly. Uh, he, uh, so I, again... Uh, don't, don't try to uh, uh, be your own spiritual director. St. Teresa says that if you're on your own spiritual director, you'll, you'll direct yourself into hell. Uh, we, we compromise with ourselves too much. Uh, we, we, uh, a lot of people, when they go to confession, they don't know how to go to confession. And they say, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. You know what they did? They did this, and they did that, and they did this, and they did that. And it's like, what did you do? Well, I, I, I've been pretty good. No. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's when the time of illumination of conscience comes, we're going to see things that we were blind, blinded to because we did not have good spiritual direction. Uh, our, we have to be free of everything. We have to be free of everyone to, to stand before God, holy and innocent. And, and that, that's a, a lot of work. That's a lot of work because, like for example, people go to confession and they say, Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Uh, I was standing in my neighbor's yard. I said, Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Well, the, the door was open and I went into the house. I said, Well, why'd you go around? Well, there was money on the table and I took them. You know, but they said they were standing in the yard. And if you didn't say, Well, why? They, they would have said, They had thought that they made a good confession. See, it's, we, we don't, we're not honest enough. And you need a good spiritual director who, I mean, even in Opus Santorum and Gelorum, we prayed the angels would beat us like a, a, a stubborn mule. You know, if we are, are falling away from God, the, in Opus we say, you know, beat me like you would a, a stubborn mule. You know, get me back on the right track. Uh, it's the same thing now with this, this gift of the divine will is so important to Jesus. It's so important to our God that we have to really have good direction. And that's why Father Father Bucci said very clearly, you know, you should have the priest to help. The priest, um, you know, at, at ordination is ontologically changed. Alter Christus. And, and this is very necessary, especially in these days, uh, where uh, the devil is very, very tricky, very, very sly. He's a liar, he's a deceiver. He's a murderer, as Jesus said. Uh, we have to make sure that, that we are free of that. So we'll continue here. <clears throat> okay, so... Uh, is the Pico Pass feels like a king who's able to exercise his royal office? Yeah. Okay, by locating. Okay, where is by locating? <laughs> Okay, okay. I got it. Thank you. So the soul who lives by divine will gives me the occasion to bivocate my life for as many acts as she does in it. See, it's it's Jesus with us, us with Jesus. And uh, like the way 
the excesses of love. When Louisa did the excess, nine excesses of love for nine months, the gift that God gave her was she could hold the baby Jesus at Christmas. Actually hold the baby Jesus at Christmas. So, I mean, just think about this. If you, if you faithfully do the nine accesses from March 25th to December 25th every day, uh, we might receive the same gift that Louisa received to actually hold the baby Jesus. See, our, our God is, he doesn't come to us as a, you know, uh, a, 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 he doesn't frighten us. He comes to us as a little baby and he says, hold me. See, our, our God is very, very humble. And, and we, this, is, this bilocation is the thing that is, is really amazing. He says, okay, so bilocate my life as many acts as she does in it. And therefore, not only is she the triumph of my divine will, but it receives more honor from the soul who acts in the divine will than from the whole of creation. So all of creation cannot give all of creation cannot give the, 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 the beauty, the love, the light as one soul doing one act in the divine will. Blinking your eye is more important than all what all of creation does. In fact, in creating each thing, God placed in some the shadow of his light, in some the note of his love, in some other images of his power, in others the flowerings of his beauty. So he, so each created thing has something that belongs to its creator. But in the soul, this is Louisa, who lives in the divine will, God places all of himself. God centralizes his whole being in Louisa. And by locating in Louisa, God fills the whole of creation with the acts that Louisa does in his holy divine will in order to receive the love, the glory, the adoration from Louisa, for each thing that came out of God's creative hands. Now, if we are linked to Louisa, this is all he's also talking about us. But you have to be one with Louisa. She's the one that possesses this. So, the one who lives in the divine will places herself in relation with all created things and takes it to heart the honor of her creator through the same relations that she receives for each thing forms the smallest to the greatest thing created. She sends the requill of her relations for everyone, past, present, and future, that her creator has done. Therefore, all communications are open between the soul and God, and the creature enters the divine order and enjoys the perfect harmony with the supreme being. And because of this, Louisa is the true triumph of my divine will. And if we are with Louisa, the same thing applies to us. Okay? It's, it's not that we're anything. We are nothing. God is everything. But to live in our littleness, to live in our humility, to live in our nothingness is what God is looking for. So that he can reign in us. Again, this is the bilocating of himself into us. On the other hand, the one who does not live in the divine will lives with the human will and therefore all communications with the supreme being are closed. Everything is disordered. Everything is disharmony. Her relationships are with her own passions and th though her passions send her acts, as uh, she sends her acts, she knows nothing about the news of her creator. More than serpent she crawls on the earth and lives in the disorder of the human things. Therefore, the soul who lives with her human will, is the dishonor of mine and the defeat of the divine fiat in the work of creation. What sorrow, my daughter, what sorrow. The human will that wants to defeat the divine will of all its, of its creator, who loves the soul so much and wants in his triumph the triumph of the creature herself. Again, this is what God is asking of us to do. He's asking us, he's pleading with us to allow him to reign in us. And who is the one who possesses this? It's Louisa. When you look at Louisa, you see the true life of Jesus, you see the true life of Mary. We're not promoting Louisa. We're promoting the new era, the new life of, of Jesus and Mary found in Louisa. 
See, it's that's why when you study this, you fall more in love with Jesus. You fall more in love with Mary. It's their life. They have found the firstborn. They have found the, the first one who can live of the divine will as Jesus and Mary, the new Adam and the new Eve have. And now God is offering this to us. It's Jesus says everything is done. Everything is complete. Now it's to be known. Now that doesn't mean you stand on the street corner and say, you read this. It, it means you have to know this. It's not your family that wants this. It's not your friends that want this. It's not your neighbors. It's not your coworkers. It's not your parishioners. Jesus says, I give this to you so that you will know this. Yeah, this is... I've seen so many people become filled with zeal with the divine will and they, they get some books and they say, here, read it, and I find the books in the trash. People read it and they go, I don't know what this is. You know, this is crazy. But Jesus has given it to us. So therefore, we have a duty and responsibility to God. And, and right now, we'll, we'll do the blessing that uh, Father Bucci asked me to do. Uh, he asked that as he was blessed by Louise and called to be an apostle of the divine will, he's asked us to give this same blessing to you. Now, he's blessed you, but he, he wants... Well, what he did was he laid hands on us and he said, I want you to become apostles of the divine will. And this, to me, I, I was very much touched by the fact that this is directly from Louisa. And so... He, he asked us to give this to those who want it. I mean, you don't have to. Um, but I, I really do believe that uh, uh, Louise has called you here to give you something that you didn't have before you came here. And that's her physical blessing uh, that was given to Father Bucci, that was given to us, and now is given, given to you. So we'll end there in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dearest Lord Jesus, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. Have pity on me and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat et amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.